Welcome to Midwest Mumbling. My name's Keone, and uh, we're going to be talking about basically the cancel culture and basically what's happening in the year 2020 and trying to uh, suss out exactly what the hell is going on, but it probably won't happen. Starting with my left, I have Frank over there. Wave the camera, say hi. That's James. We got Eric over here. That's Dave. Like so, Keone. Stacy Warner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like we should have agreed on this title. Stay tuned. Too bad. <laughs> I, I, I feel like the winging it approach was the best. Like, All right. that took me All by right. surprise. I'm like, oh, we're going right. to have a title. Stacy could be our sidebar. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to kick this off with James. What do you think about basically the entire media's approach to what's been happening lately and just the world in general? I mean, so for me, I think the the, the cancel culture topic is extremely uh, out of control. Everywhere you look, some, I mean, everyone has been young and dumb and made choices or said something or did something, and the, the past keeps coming back and canceling shows, canceling people, changing their name, everything to try and be more sensitive, and I am just not a fan of catering to every single person's feelings. That's fair. I don't know. I'm a I'm a big fan of reality. Just be what you be what you are and be about what you say you're about and if people are trying to get in the way of that, then that's a problem. I think that you know, we have free speech for a reason. It doesn't matter if it's offensive or not, you know. And it's one of those things where if if we don't be careful with this, we're going to eliminate free speech just one step at a time. That's my big concern. And it's a fair one. I mean, with everything that's uh, going on lately, especially, it feels like it's, it's, it's a taboo to offend somebody, but that's been going on forever. And I suppose when you think about it from a, well, a societal standpoint, maybe we should be able to evolve and be the society and be the civilization that we want to be, but I think a lot of people want a different version of society. We need to focus in on what we all agree on would be a proper civilization, and that's a hard one to do. Not everybody's going to agree on everything. Well, and they say that you want to try to be the change you want to see in the world, so we have a platform called YouTube that we can attempt that with, mm -hmm. so here we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and that's what leads to the big fear of cancel culture. Half the time, a lot of the things nowadays that are getting canceled, they're they're getting canceled for the wrong reasons. Right. Hell, we have TV shows that are being either taken off the air, oh, we're taking this episode off because, you know, one person, maybe one group of people think that it's something offensive, there's something wrong with it. You do a little history, you do a little searching, you figure out it's not even what people thought it was. It all comes down to kind of what you do you discussed somebody gets offended they want to cancel it. so do we How think are we supposed to learn do we think yeah. there's an agenda behind that there is there a, a puppet master behind all oh this? god no god no well we, you have to you have to <laughs> ask the question i i get the question this, so but i am so tired of the conspiracy theories of you know oh, there's some grand puppet master no there's not like I cannot think of a single organization or, or person that operates at such a high functioning level. You can orchestrate, uh, manipulate millions of people. It's just a lot of. Oh, my feelings people. are hurt. Yeah, it's just a lot of people with social media. That's all it is. Could it also not be due to an algorithm that handles all of that? Because ah. it's capable. It's capable. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I know. I, you know I don't believe that. I'm just saying, what do you think? I, no, I mean, I, I straight up, like, for me, w what triggers me is whenever people go on these rogue, like, conspiracy theories of, you know, like uh, like Warren Buffett. Like, okay, I get he's a billionaire. Or, sorry, uh, or George Soros. And they're like, oh, he's funding this, he's funding that. I'm like, he's like an 80-year-old dude probably sitting at home going to bed at 5 p.m., <laughs> like, I am not expecting that he is meeting in smoky rooms, orchestrating the destruction of America through some large plot. I'm like, 
No one does that. No one does that. I cannot <laughs> envision. It's just life. So no Illuminati? No, no. Like, it's... People always want a reason on why something happened or someone to blame. And it, it's easy to tie some rich dude into, you know, uh, oh, well, the government's mandating mass or the government doesn't like this or this or that or some protest and it's... No. No. There's a fair point to that. I think that a lot of... Uh... I think a lot of the problem with I'm offended and cancel all this is just to get attention. And it's really easy to get attention nowadays, especially if you're loud about it and mm -hmm. you're in mm -hmm. people's face on social media about it. And you may not even care about the subject, but meh, if I scream loud, people pay attention to me. No, 100%. Like, no. At work, we had the thing where you know the, the ice machine was turned off because of COVID. And everybody was rioting over the ice machine that we've only had for like a year and a half. Mm. Out of the fifteen years the company's been there, that's not fair. You you've accustomed me to a certain <laughs> yeah, lifestyle. But, I demand but, that lifestyle be taken care of. I get it, but like my, my example was, one of the people was complaining about the ice machine, and like I've been trying to defend it. I'm like, well, it's just how it's spread of COVID, but I really don't care about COVID. I really don't care about the ice machine. And finally, I just said. You know, I've actually uh, worked here 10 years and I've never used the ice machine. And the next response was, yeah, you're right. I've never have used it either. You're kidding me. This guy <laughs> had been pounding me for like three. Okay, that wasn't the right choice of words. <laughs> this guy <laughs> has been hassling me for three days about the ice machine. And then when I told him, I was like, well, I've never even used it. And then he's like, oh, you're right. I've never used it either. And it just kind of dwindled out. And I was like. Sounds it, like a penalty. It, it, it shows the example of people jumping on a fad or a topic or an idea for the sole purpose just to jump on it so that they can have something to yell and scream about. Have an even if they're not yelling and screaming. Like, everybody wants to be right, even if what they want to be right about is wrong. Mm -hmm. So let me ask Eric a question here. Eric, you've had economics classes and whatnot. Um, <laughs> what do you think about the opportunities afforded to different groups of people and how this plays into this cancel culture thing? Um, I mean, it, it really depends. Um, it all depends on demographics, really. But yeah. uh, <laughs> that's how it, like, I don't know. It, it, it really depends on how it pans out. Um, but... Uh, it is your generation too. I am curious right. about just the overall concept of it too. Because I mean, do do you really do social media or anything like that? Like I do, but it. I mean, it, it really depends on how you view it. Do you do you view it as being influenced more by the media in general, or do you influence by influenced by just by people in general trying to get attention, or? Um, I mean, I don't know. At this point, what do you think is the strongest uh, influence, the media or the influencers on any other platforms? Uh, I don't know, man. Here. It's, it's kind of it's a battle between both. Yeah. It's a we'll very we'll narrow it down. Thing. When you want your information, where do you go? Do you go to the media or do you go to social media? Neither. Yeah. If you want direct, if you want direct information, it's always going to be... Um, Scientific research. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> Google Scholar, for instance, to find your, your papers. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know Google Scholar was a thing. Like, is that like a real website? <laughs> like Google yeah. Scholar? Well, you, can get, you can get research uh, okay. papers from there. Yeah. It's, it's, if you're, like, into, like, data science or uh, medical industry or something. Oh, no, like I just watch YouTube videos of, right. you know, doctors. That's the answer Keone was I'm, looking for. If I'm, the, yeah. if I'm going to the... To the how to do it by yourself, but um, then it's going to be YouTube. But if it's based off someone's opinion, then no. Well, see, the the yes. funny thing is the way the way Facebook and all these sites work is there has to be a place for this information to come from originally. Well, you get this meme effect of you know it's a condensed, bite-sized version for the average person to understand that comes from a source somewhere, right? Well, oftentimes the source is extrapolated from one of these other research papers that you can find on Google Scholar, if it's something reputable. 
but most of the time it's not, mm-hmm. and that's a problem. That's where this manipulation comes in. I mean, what was, what was the last thing that was canceled, like show or actor pulled? Like, what was the most recent event? The big one right now is a lot of the uh, actors that are doing voice work for like cartoons or anything like that, and they're doing the opposite race. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're pulling back their role. Yeah. Because they don't want to be offensive. Like my favorite one is Jenny Slate. She does the uh, voice for a uh, little black girl in uh, Big Mouth. What's her yeah. name? Uh, I, I know you're talking about, but I can't think of it. Yeah, she's well. She's voicing uh, <coughs> a, 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 a black teenager who's like 13, and she herself is like white Hispanic in her 20s, but she doesn't want to do that now and so she's pulling her role back and that sucks because she was a great fucking voice actor and she did that fucking role perfectly so now we gotta find somebody that is actually African American that can actually do that voice and still roll with that role and I'm like why? Why? It was, it was fine like I, I get it you don't want to be offensive but well I mean like cares? so for, for certain things I think it's okay and other things it's not so for example the, the lady that does the voice of Bart Simpson I'm not that bothered Knowing that she's imitating a cartoon character of a nine-year-old yellow boy who yeah. should be like forty-three by now. Sure. <laughs> but I also understand, like uh, when they did uh, like the last Airbender or Ghost in the Shell, and they're like supposed oh, yeah. to be Asian, totally yeah. yeah. whitewashing role. It's yeah, like, whitewashing role. So yeah. like some of that makes sense. Where like you know, if you were to take a a, a movie. Which is predominantly, like, predominantly supposed to be, you know, an Asian culture or Latino or African American or whatever, and you just start throwing white random celebrities at it, it doesn't make sense. But then sometimes, I, I mean, it really comes back to intent because, like, in the movie Shawshank Redemption, which is just awesome, Red, who's played by Morgan Freeman, in the book was actually supposed to be a white Irish guy. Hmm. But. Morgan Freeman did a way better job than any, like, what, some some Ed Sheeran, like, looking dude. Like, I'll take Morgan Freeman all day. You can put him in any role. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Shark and Jaws kind of thing. And it, it does raise the question, using the voice actors. Are the voice actors just pulling away because they're scared of their careers getting canceled? Mm-hmm. Like, did they really want to leave the roles, or are they terrified of what society's doing right now to people that are doing things that they don't enjoy? Yeah. I think it's a little of both. I think they're <clears throat> risk averse because, I mean, voice actors probably aren't really making a lot to begin with, so they're just trying to scrape whatever opportunities they can. You know, they're not quite at that same level of pay of, of what you get uh, as being like a normal on-screen actor, for, mm-hmm. for instance. That's a really good point. The uh, the president of a food company called Goya recently got called out because he. Promoted Trump. He said, I agree with what Trump's doing. I like him as a president. And then a bunch of fucking people on social media were like, fuck this place. We're boycotting these beans. And instead of apologizing, he was like, fuck you. I like the president. The president asked me to do something. I'm going to go and do it. Ted, yeah. Ted Cruz kind of did the same thing where he was uh, backing the president and kind of pushing the Black Lives Movement aside. Mm-hmm. But just kind of standing for his own. Yeah. What it is. And they're trying to cancel them harder, but I feel like the more you stand up to that is that's what we need. That's what we need is just honestly adults, yeah. adults standing up and saying, "Quit being a bitch, stop fucking crying, and we're doing right. it this way." Uh-huh. You want to change it? Be a CEO. You uh-huh. know what you want me to do? At yeah. what point does it come too far? Right. At what well, point that's do we what, go too far? Yeah, uh-huh. that's kind of what Dave was saying at the start. Was like, "Hey, be your own person." Uh, pretty much preach what you're preaching and be what you're about but at the same time hate hate is a thing yeah so I mean th- don't let it come to a Hitler yeah. type deal because that preaching well, is there's, yeah. there's something to be said for the tribalistic nature of human beings anyway because we're all already evolved to strike that nerve of you know we agree whenever we all hate the same thing. We, we find common ground in negativity. So, you know, we're saying, oh, well, there's a lion out there in this field, so everybody's on alert. But if it's, oh, there's a tree out in that field, it's non-threatening, well, that's, you know, it's a great tree, it's nice, it may have fruit, eh, 
it's cool, but I'm not that concerned. It's not the same effect. And that's where you get this negative coherence that happens mm -hmm. with, within tribal groups. And whether you like it or not, we're still tribal people. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about the amount of people that you can maintain in your mind at any given time in a year, for instance. It's probably going to be between 150 to 300 people. Any more than that, you can't keep track of it anymore. And that's a, a standard <laughs> yeah. tribe. Well, I mean, I, yeah. I was Ooh. like seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying like, I'm not saying like your core close, close friend. Yeah. I'm saying like you have your inner circle, you have like your family, your extended family, and then you have like acquaintances and coworkers. Yeah. And by the time you get to that limit, that's when you've hit that number. Oh, yeah. Okay, I get what you're saying now. Um, oh. But yeah, like that that's something that's probably not gonna go any go away anytime soon. We're evolved to be that way. So it's easy for people to rally around these negative concepts the way that they do. So cancel culture is just a natural fit for us. And with yeah. the power of social media, we have this ability to see the world on the whole. And then the vocal minorities are saying, Hey, this is happening. Oh man, that's bad. Let's just spread that. And that's just the same cool. same phenomenon. And, and the thing that I notice is is, and I, and I said it before, is that no one is everyone's already made up their mind on what they believe on issues and everything, and there's no there's no one going out to ask any questions to understand why you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Like if, if somebody's against a certain thing. It become it, it's like it becomes their job to convince me that I should believe the same way. And I'm like, hey, you know what would actually be better than you trying to convince me is you trying to explain it to me since I'm not understanding you. Because typically, most times when people aren't agreeing, it's just because they're they're viewing it differently and they're not understanding the other person's side. Like everyone agrees that the, the sky is blue because everyone can see it. But I feel like if I was to track down a colorblind person and maybe they couldn't see the sky as blue, oh, yeah, it's blue. They're like, well, I, I see it as a green. I would be like, why? And if they told me they were colorblind, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I wouldn't even go into details, but when you get on the larger scale issues, and it's like, you know, like the, the whole issues of why is this bad? Yeah, just, yeah. just explain it to me why it offends you. I mean, Tony the Tiger is not voiced by a tiger. <laughs> so, um, yeah. gotcha. that would be yep. impressive. Let's yep. Get back to MGM. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, <laughs> line, that line was brutally assaulted for those videos, I'm sure. Where was the, you know, that's where cancer culture probably would have came in handy is that poor lion being tied down and prodded. But, but to your point, though, we don't really often see people get to that point of, asking why no. they don't care about why because they've already aligned themselves in this in this social identity of I am you know religious fundamentalist I follow this uh, right-wing ideology I am in this group this is what I identify as you are clearly the enemy because you think differently from mm -hmm. me I'm not even gonna bother asking why because I assume I already know why and I don't view you as a person anymore I view you as the other side yeah. so that's kind and of then like, that turns into a war yeah whether so, you like it or not it does yeah yeah it's just like your just like your analogy with the, the lion in the tree which love it by the way <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah just like your lion in the tree don't let um, what you see just to be uh, be a, a place for discrimination or hate Decide decide for yourself based off of actions right. or words. Right. Well, and I, I think it's also interesting because there's probably some stuff that should be canceled, should be pulled, should be edited, and and then there's other things where I'm like, okay, I'm not I'm not really seeing the connection. But it doesn't mean that I'm not open to understanding. It just means that I don't get it because the thing is, is everybody has different life experiences. So some people will click or share a certain experience and that's what makes sense to them. But I'm a, I'm a white dude from a small town in Indiana. So my experiences are pretty limited to what a white guy from a small town in Indiana would go through. Yeah. So I don't catch on to certain outrage um, of certain things because 
I've never really experienced anything. Like my, my life's a pretty sheltered, mellow, calm. Well, let's let's take a step back. How do you how do you guys think that these things should be decided? Who who should be the one that gets to drop the axe on whether or not something gets canceled, and what could the reasoning possibly be? Because you're treading that line of you know free speech. Well, who gets to decide, and what are the what are the credentials behind that? Like, what are the parameters? What no, absolutely, the Congress. The government. Congress, for sure. No, I'm saying like, uh, obviously, you're going to have government intervention. Oh, I wouldn't have said against that. I was when joking. It, I absolutely have no <laughs> desire for the government to dictate any way how I live my life. Well, well regardless, though, that's going to come up. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, say for instance, a, a company of some sort, some enterprise decides that they're going to start canceling. We'll just say, we'll just go with Twitter as an example because it's relevant. Um, if Jack Dorsey suddenly decides uh, that because he is CEO and, you know, God Almighty of Twitter, he's going to say this is the final word. If these parameters are violated, uh, you know, talking about, you know, hate speech, et cetera, et cetera, these posts will be deleted and that person will be banned effective immediately and that's it. The, the, should he have that kind of ability? Of his of his company, yes. Yep. And, and I think For therein sure. lies how we would be able to suss out or at least cancel something. It will happen naturally, like it has throughout yeah. all history. Yeah. If, if he decided, I'm doing this way on Twitter, fall in line or get out, a lot of people are going to fall out, and then another company is going to come up and do exactly what everybody else wants to do. The majority is going to rule on that. But that's a good point, too, because, you know, if that person says the tree is bad and it's only four people and the other 400 don't care, then those four people are going to basically be able to run it because the other 400 don't care. And then that's the, what, the the, the, the flag that they'll fly, I guess, mm -hmm. in order to go into battle for that. And that's the danger with it, is if we don't care because we're busy doing stuff, if they're busy hunting, gathering, and don't have time to worry about the fucking tree, then... They'll try and make that better, their crusade. And they'll be able to do that because everybody else is busy. That's a good point. We were talking about that the other day. Pe most people are busy working, doing what they're supposed to do to be able to survive. And you have people that are the vocal minorities that are causing all this stink. Mm -hmm. So, but I, have time. Yeah. I, I right. feel like with Twitter, okay, so Twitter's a, a, a private business, but. America is its own country with its own rules, so you have freedom of speech. So if Twitter decides to ban anything that they deem hate speech, well, at what point does that? Yeah, but then I feel like free speech. Okay, that's what that company decided, but you still have freedom of speech. Sooner or later, another company is just going to create a completely unfiltered version, and you can say what you want, post what you want. And there's no filter and I think that's the problem is, is everybody's feelings are getting in the way of the, the original intention of this country's founding of freedom of speech you need to be able to say whatever you want like I get it it may be offensive it may be hurtful it may be mean it may be derogatory it may be all those things but you cannot let anyone govern or dictate what you're allowed to say or Okay, so what I'm okay. Uh, so we're don't attack gonna, my weight. Like, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> gonna attack your weight. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw this out there. So where we work, I'm gonna keep it unnamed, I guess. Yeah, but yeah. some of you may know. That would be a smart idea. Love you guys. <laughs> uh, but um, so where we work, we are not allowed to carry firearms or knives, which obviously safety reason. Most places, um, yeah. yeah. Most places Pretty are common. like that. Most uh, most federal buildings are like that as well. Mm -hmm. But um, Second Amendment, you can carry your gun. So now we're getting into the topic: should a um, should a privately owned company be able to infringe upon your rights at all? I, I think so because it's it's what one or two or however many people created something, and they're. They're, they're selling a product or, or, or anything like that. I mean, you're entering into an agreement to follow that company's guidelines, rules, to get what you want, which is typically money. Or if you're going into a business for a service, like if I go into Applebee's 
um, and I'm not allowed to, you know, carry my Glock, hey, I get it. I'm cool with that because I really want your chicken fingers. I'll give that up. <laughs> but I refuse to not be able to carry a Glock at my house while eating chicken fingers. Yeah. But then it comes to the same it comes to the same thing where, hey, don't get on Twitter if you can't follow these rules. You know what I'm saying? Well and the other thing is, you know, you're a customer versus yeah. an employee in that scenario too. Sure. So if under the, the contra con contractual obligation of the employee and employer environment, you're stating that you're willing to work under whatever conditions they provided, yeah. and if that includes not bringing a gun or weapons or whatever to work, then that means you're okay to be paid and do your job, but if you violate that, then you're out. Mm -hmm. So what if a customer comes to the establishment with a gun? The customer is the employer of the company. When you think about it. They're willing to be what if they're a possible customer? A potential customer? I mean, it's one of those things where it depends on the area um, and the circumstances, but ultimately, you know, most businesses already have rights to say, hey, you know, we can refuse entry to any customer based on a certain amount of rules. So it would end up it's like it's kind of like no shoes, no shirt, no service. It would so it would come down to the employer. Sure. And that's where I think the phrase take your business elsewhere comes into play. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden if you the customer are the employer, then you can take your business elsewhere to yeah. someone else. And yeah. I mean if you look at like uh, the Menards and Lowe's, one place requires a mask, one place doesn't. So whatever your opinion on the masks are, go to that place. And that's what I'm saying about Twitter. If Twitter institutes this like we deem what is hate speech, you know, this and that. Sooner or later, there's going to be a, a, a twatter or something that that pops up. Yeah. Hashtag twatter. That's, that's what you are if you're on Twitter, right? Hashtag twatter. Twitter. twatter. twitter. I don't know. I think it's a twat. Look, I, I, my job is not to think of company names, okay? That's not my strong suit. But it's like an, another one will come and be like, hey, we're going to do this unfiltered as long as the government yeah. is not involved. And, and that's what bothers me is when the government is trying to regulate freedom of speech or, or anything like that. If the public wants to outcry and the business wants to decide to go with the public outcry, I understand it, but I'm not okay with the government going into a cancel culture. I may not like the fact that a show gets canceled because a bunch of people were offended by it, but it is what it is. I can also get up and go make a new show that mirrors it. Yeah. I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not. So I'm not gonna get that trigger about it. Going with our, our thoughts on businesses, and I, you, you sign a contract to work at a business as an employee. Contract gives you the rules. I mean, as we've discussed, Twitter, like it's owned. Like somebody created that. Now let's go back to the cancel culture that's happening in TVs, movies, news, all of that. Who owns and creates that? Who gets the final say? Because that's the major thing we're seeing. We've brought up the voice acting. We've brought up, there's an episode of The Golden Girls that is no longer able to be shown anywhere because there's a misconception that they were purposely doing blackface. Hmm. Any, anybody that's actually watched it knows that's not what was even happening in that episode. Right. It was a funny moment where it was implied that a black couple thought they were doing it, but they weren't. They just had mud masks on. But now that episode's gone. Huh. By that argument, shouldn't the creator of the show have the ownership and get to be the one that decides yeah. if it should be taken off? But I mean, he sold, like the writer or creator, pretty much sold it to the company. And then the company that's airing the show is now making the decision. And the only reason they're making that decision is because there's a public outcry and it's probably a business decision of, hey, we don't want to have advertisers pulled or people out protesting in front of the gate or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, the the, uh, the litig litigus, the, how do I even say that? The litigious nature of the United States in general. People love to sue over all kinds of things because it's an easy, quick buck. Um, but that has somehow or another turned into a hybrid of that 
but also companies are now so tired of getting sued, it's a pushback of, you know what, we're throwing our hands up, whatever it takes to avoid trouble, because we're trying to survive right now, we don't want any more hassle, sure. If that's what will make you guys happy, you got it. And that's kind of what I see out of this. Like 90% of the time, we're talking like, uh, yeah, this is a PR nightmare, or uh, yeah, this is an HR nightmare. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole. Pull the plug on whatever it is. Let's bury it. Mm -hmm. That's it's, fair. It, it's getting super crazy, too. Yeah. Like, um, anything that relates to the generation where we had slavery, like uh, the country band, uh, what is it, Lady Antebellum? Lady Antebellum. Mm -hmm. Now they're trying to change their name to Lady A. Yeah. And but they which, have to sue. <laughs> but now they have to sue a... Uh, a black blues singer that has had that name for 20 years. For 20 wow. years. Wow, yeah. That's quite a turnaround. Yeah. Crazy. So, in order to try and not look racist, they had to do one of the most possibly racist things. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm going to take, <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm stuff gonna from take you. I'm going to take your, your, your trademark name. I have not heard about but that. But that's yet. the beauty of America. They could have chosen it's any ridiculous. damn name. <laughs> they had to it's go with ridiculous. one that was already there. Hey, we're going to short our name. Oh, you already have it. We're going to sue you now. Yeah. And maybe that's what it comes down to. We have more money than you, so we can yeah. probably win this. And that's the horrifying thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you brought up NARC because it did make me think that, like, it's an evolution because we will eventually, as a society, figure out who's in, who's out. So if McDonald's decided, okay, we're not hiring anybody that's Mexican because we don't want to, ta da! Like, there's a very good chance that us as a society would say, oh, we're not going to put up with that. Nobody's going to your restaurant. It will collapse. But it's uh, double-sided because take Menards, for instance. You ever seen an unattractive woman working at Menards? <laughs> it depends on which one you go to. Uh, not really. Like, the majority <laughs> of Menards employees are, are going to be gorgeous. They're going to be younger girls that are probably going in for college and just need a side job or whatever. And they're all going to be hot. But society, us as a whole, are like, that's fine. So it's it's weird how we decide what's good and what's bad. And it's like I said, it's kind of double sided, and it's one of those things oh, that that's good. an instance where I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's fine. So, so <laughs> I'll wear the mask like, as long as they're still hot girl. I'll, I'll wear the mask. Just let, let her show <laughs> me where the screws are. Like that'd be great, it. you know. And I um, mean, it's probably sexist, but that's yeah. what the society has been going towards. It's so not. I mean. Where do we do, where do we divide the line on ethics with this whole right and wrong of what should or should not be with that, for instance, or you know who who can say what is good enough to cancel over? And that's the problem. Whoever gets the most attention over it, and if a lot right. of people don't care, you're they're... getting there. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me hold you there, okay? Because you're on to something here. Go on. Okay. So who is again the loudest? Minorities of that, the, the minority of the yeah. Be very clear on that. Yeah, fair, not fair. the minorities, <laughs> but the vocal minorities. Right. So you're talking about extremists on one end of the spectrum and on the other. Mm -hmm. And what is everybody else in the middle doing? They're dealing with the Trying brunt of it because they're, they're busy working. Mm -hmm. They're they're siding with one minority or siding with the other. They they will side because which they are in they different to? positions on that spectrum, yeah. and whichever side they're closest to, that's what they lean towards. So the center of that spectrum keeps getting pulled left and right. And right now, you have this stretching of the center mm -hmm. because you have this Trump ideology, the Trump what what we call Trumpian ideology, on the far right that's stretched way out right now, and then now we have Black Lives Matter movement and everything else with cancel, cancel culture going on, it's stretching the other direction. And we're gonna pull apart in the middle at some point. Yeah. And what happens when you pull apart in the middle, it hurts everybody in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's tough because you have this socioeconomic dynamic with, you do have, and I'm gonna use the word minorities, mm -hmm. uh, in the true meaning, most often will be represented by the liberal and left side because that's the way the politicians usually gear their policy. Mm. So that's why they go that, that direction. Uh, but there are some on the other side. But the main thing is, you know, 
this whole Black Lives Matter thing isn't even really being picked up by the politicians because they're not on the uptake as fast as what people in general are. I mean, you have social media, um, YouTube, which is still social media, but a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's just so much information being spouted out from a few loud groups. And I don't think that the government can really figure out what to do at this point. So we have this unraveling and these riots and all this stuff and everybody's like, I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're at a point now where no one really knows what to do with the future. I think 2020 is the year if we don't have a game plan for this. Exactly. Like the entire year, like Australia was on fire at first and nobody really knew how to deal with an entire country on fire. Right. Now we got a pandemic, nobody really has a playbook on that. It's just been cascading like that for a while. Well, and it's a combination of all of these, these things that you have the George George Floyd protests, Black Lives Matter, the, the riots, the pandemic, all at the same time. But the special case with the pandemic, you had stay-at-home orders for a long extended time. So that creates the idle hand scenario of people sitting at home with their smartphones, posting whatever feels good to them while they're frustrated, stuck at home, not working. Or you have the essential workers that are working that are frustrated because they're not sitting at home getting paid to do it. Everybody's got their axe to grind. Were, were people upset about that? I wasn't. Yes. <laughs> there were a couple. Uh, yeah, one, two, three. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, the people that had to work through it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a little bit of that. Someone say rightfully so. They were upset. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's been a galvanizing scenario for both of those camps. In a perfect storm scenario when you wrap it all in one big blanket and this is how we get 2020 the most chaotic year that I can remember but I think too like what I, what I always wonder is you know has it been like this before or things like that like we always talk about like ah, well, this generation because of our social media we're we're more outraged or whatever but it's like, not that we're more outraged, it's that we have the ability to make one. decisions faster. Yeah. We're all now capable of godlike communication. To see other people's ideas, to see other people's opinions right. instantaneously. Yeah. It also brings the, the fear of, is our instant gratification era what's causing most of this? Hmm. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's the cause, it's a, definitely a huge contributor. Because whenever you have people that are not self-disciplining uh, and they're constantly in this, this culture and a positive feedback loop of, well, I just want to go around and get some McDonald's fries and then they go and do it and it doesn't cost them very much and they feel great about it and they just keep doing it. That's just one example. Then you have, oh, I want to see how many likes I got on a post that I had earlier. They're going to check that constantly because they want that hit, that dopamine hit. Well, from a neuroscience perspective, if you overuse those the dopamine receptors, what do they do? They don't work as well, so it takes more and more and more. Well, that feeds back into the same problem because they're just unhappy pro progressively. The Mr. Brownstone effect. Right, yeah. and you see this with drug <laughs> drug addiction as well. <laughs> we call that that from now on. Like that's awesome. <laughs> we are. We are in a state of a drug-addled minded society at this point. But how do you gauge that from generation of era? Good point, bringing it back. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said, I mean, you have the Vietnam that's era right. culture that's probably pretty close, but they didn't have the ability to burst out ideas as fast and as widespread as what we have now. But I mean, that era you had not only, that era or generation you had not only Vietnam but the Cold War, and then before that you had uh, World War One and World War Two. So I mean... Well, World War I and World War Two, people were all in agreement that Nazis are bad and okay, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? I don't know because Nazis had to happen, so apparently that's a different uh, topic entirely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so apparently, not everybody was that upset okay. about it for a little while. But now, but now everybody's not in agreement that hate is bad, hate speech is bad, and how 
what's publicized, publicized is that. Now we're arguing. Now, now we arguing are talking about how Nazism is happened. bad. Now we are talking about how Nazism happened. See. So studies show that people uh, tend to fall into this evil behavior pattern whenever others around them in their environment are falling into that pattern. So it's an environmental thing that is what they found. Um, you know, in, in, in Nazi Germany, for example, people just wanted to rally around something that made them feel pride about their country. Um, and then they were taken for a ride and they just kept going along with it little by little, inch by inch, allowing things to slide, allowing things to slide. And nobody was standing up for anyone else. They were saying, you know, nationalist pride is number one above all at this point. And along with that, now all of a sudden, now we're talking about race. And now next thing you know, it's about genocide. And then that is at the point at which it was already too far gone and they were completely committed, regardless of how they thought about it. And I think that's what terrifies me about cancel culture. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of the things that are going on right now with society need to happen. Change does need to happen. The statues, like we discussed it earlier, like we can understand tearing down statues that, you know, make one of, of the large groups of Americans uncomfortable and make them remember things. But it also has to terrify you in the fact that once we forget what's happened, it will happen again. Sure. There, there's a reason that the phrase history repeats itself is used over and over again. And that's in my personal opinion, which for all I know is completely wrong. I'm never going to say that I'm right, but that's what terrifies me about it. Is mm -hmm. and once we erase the things that make us remember what happened so that they don't happen again, how long until it just happens again? <laughs> so I'm gonna play devil's advocate again. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at this from a different perspective because this is a common argument I hear about this one. So the these monuments are in effect monuments to victorious leaders, generals, Civil War generals, for instance, which is in a in stark contrast to the 9/11 memorial or the Vietnam memorial where you're remembering the sacrifices made or the, the deaths to never forget. Um, but it, it's, it's not the same as this one guy cast in bronze. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, the, and the, there were atrocities committed in the name of the Confederacy, for instance. I don't feel that bad about a statue of that yeah. nature being yeah, taken I. away. That's, that's why but I it sets a bad precedent. I will agree. <laughs> But I think, like when Frank said, you know, it terrifies me. I mean, at the end of the day, my opinion is that almost everything is motivated by fear. The only time I really see people or even myself do something is through a fear. Like, I feel like fear is the best motivator. And that's for me why people are so adamant about canceling things nowadays is because they fear the impact and people are so resistant because they fear the path that will lead you down. And I think that's why each side is so uh, passionate about it is because they're fearful of the outcome of either doing something or not doing something. Right. And fear is, you know, simply a perceived consequence, right? Mm -hmm. So you have very few just say institutions or individuals that are able to see through that uh, get past that whole fear is the mind killer phase because it's dumbing everybody down very clearly um, if they're able to and see and, and, and be able to take the data and parse it out and say okay this is what's really going on let's make sense of what we see let's ask each other questions how do we actually feel about it just like you were saying before let's have a conversation Let's not just assume, oh, well, I can tell that you're this type of person. I don't need to know anymore. I can see based on your social media profile that you're a certain type of person. I don't care if your mind has changed or not. We're going to go to war with words. You know, it comes back to that line in that 
tree, man. So, <laughs> right back to it. There's there's a lot Great of circling. Story. There's a lot of circling with this, and that's why we're stuck, is because yeah. we can't get out of the loop. And it's something something has to change to make that happen, and it's not going to be something we've ever done before. Yeah, It's going to have to be the next step in evolution as a society that we actually finally get to the point where we realize good things are possible. We have to take conscious effort to make them happen. It's, it's, a, it's a quality decision issue. So we need to make good choices and be good to each other and have each other in mind and say, okay, I am concerned about how you feel, or you have said something very peculiar, or I am worried about your possible uh, consequences later if you continue down this path. You gotta watch out for each other. Not necessarily be gatekeeping, but... Well, maybe in that case then, asking my whole my whole statue thing, maybe, maybe the Black Lives Matter, like, Whoever's truthfully, you know, the head speaking for them. Everybody has one. They're out there. Maybe we should sit down with them and figure out so that we, A, don't forget history. Maybe we should look at it a different way. Maybe you're right. We shouldn't put statues up of some Confederate soldiers that may have won a battle or two. But then again, I don't, I don't know why we're glorifying people that lost anyway. Hmm. So, I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Tearing down those statues really doesn't bother me they can all go maybe we should think of a different way and ask the proper people what should we put up so that we don't forget so that we Probably can bring the right attention to it's usually wherever right. statues tore down a dollar general well, well, I mean some would argue instead there should be a statue of Harriet Tubman there Not Larry Bird. To, to, take a, <laughs> to take a positive <laughs> spin on it. Well, now hang on. There are, there are heroes of those ages that should be glorified. No, but maybe that's the good point, because maybe that was the idea. You know, yeah, the Confederacy lost, but here's a statue to remind you. These people lost and everything. History's there's, always written by the winners, so but maybe... But they're still Americans. Yeah, exactly. Like, that, like, was, like, that was their version of, don't forget your history, and now we're tearing it down. Maybe we should leave stuff like that up, even if it's painful. Well, it's one of those things where we can have something up, but I think that it just needs to be thought through differently because uh -huh. those statues were put in place by, by and large, private investors that wanted to secure a piece of heritage for their particular family in the South. Is that not fair? I'm not really the best to ask if it was fair or not. I mean, yeah. if it was their money. Who's, who's the judge? To be right. fair, who's the, who's the judge of ethics about? But we're also at that situation where, you know, we're back to free speech again. Now, yeah. does, is free speech in, infringed upon whenever you remove a statue? And we brought that up earlier. There's no statues of Hitler. You don't see any Mussolini statues anywhere. No. That's Mussolini a great reason. example. If you, reason there was one of Saddam Hussein. That's true. If you talk to Germans, very clear it was. If you talk to Germans about anything pertaining to World War II or Nazism, you, you, you typically will get a couple different responses. You'll get one of, I don't want to talk about this. I refuse to talk about this. This is not beneficial to bring up. Or the other, which is the flip side of, yeah, it was a really terrible thing, but if you notice, our country has rid itself of every sign of that beyond the memorials from the war. And we have done our best to move past it and we really wish everyone else would too, so we can move on. <clears throat> then I gotta wonder if it's even worth it to do stuff like that, to tear down statues and proclaim that your idea, it's basically proclaiming your idea is better than what we've been doing for a while. Is it? Is it just tearing down statues and causing a bunch of trouble for what looks like no reason? Maybe you had a good idea, but maybe other ideas were had, maybe you can Oh, well, and I mean, the thing too is you don't understand the original intent of why it was put there. I mean, I mean, you're talking about a statue that was put up 100, 200 years ago, whenever, um, and you don't know the intent of why it was put up. You have the assumption of why it should be torn down, but I mean, you, you, you're like I said, it goes back to a lot of the questions and, and trying to understand. Where that person was coming from so 
like for me, like Saddam Hussein putting up a statue of Saddam Hussein, you know, I felt like <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we all knew the intent there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, the, I feel like when you make a sixty foot, you know, statue of yourself, like it's you pretty know, much answers question. Yeah, pretty much just some, some dominance. Yes. But then again, if I could build a sixty foot statue of me and put it in my backyard, I mean, why not? <laughs> I guess I guess another another question we have is like why why do South American countries not have the same issue? They're just as how do you know, you know they don't? Well nothing on uh, social media. Uh -huh. say that. That's, that's that. a good point. Yeah, but think about your social media bubble. It, the the thing is so it's the way social media works for us. And it may be different in other countries, but it generally will be geared towards the people that you live nearby, right. or at least the people in your country. You don't really get a whole lot of randomness coming mm -hmm. from outside that. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of in a, a closed feedback loop anyway, because we're in the United States and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be the loudest country every time on every topic. Yeah. So we're drowning out everybody else. We can't hear anything else outside of our own voices. So there is a lot of things going on in the rest of the world, and it happens every day, and there are atrocities that committed every day. We don't hear about it because we can't hear over ourselves. And the sad part is we have to relate on the we have to rely on the media because we have to because we're not over there looking at it, and then we have to rely on what they tell us. And sometimes they don't tell us a lot of things. They're, they're too worried about Joe Biden smelling people's hair. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. No. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's concerning. I, I, hate, I hate to say it, and I'm probably wrong, but the, the problem is media used to be to report the important things, the information that we needed, facts. It, it, it's not about facts anymore. We all know that it's yeah. not about facts anymore. It used to be it, government service, too. It's about ratings, mm -hmm. right. as almost anything is. Yeah. That's the worst part because that we have to play to that. They have to play to that now, and that's what we have to go by for information. And that sucks. The re the reason I come into foreign countries like that is because uh, the majority of the slave trade was done to South America. Mm -hmm. So, if they're not experiencing the same problem, are we the only? Are we trying to express that we're the only mixed mixed race country there is? Because there's not a lot of countries that are having the same feud that we are having. That's a good point. Or louder. Sure? I, I mean, well, that's, I don't know. That's his sure. point, though. We're louder about our stuff. And there's is there, that's what I'm saying. Is there a on. scientific journal that's yeah. saying that there's other feuds going on? That's like, that's just no. Yeah. All there is is media. And they so are we media? just media driven? Or are we just. Well, you can. Uh... The, the only way that people outside of the, the media really get to see that is by first-hand account and go evidence of going out and seeing the world, you know? So if you go to, you know, England, for instance, London specifically, you have a large, increasingly large Muslim population that doesn't seem to jive well with everything else that's going on there. Um, and that's been very well documented and that's just years. one yeah. example of many. Yeah. So this is this intermingling and globalization effect has been going on for quite some time, and it's coming to a head with, you know, its natural progression. But then on top of it, social media, which is soaking the flame of everybody's passions. So anyone suddenly now has a voice, whereas they did not before, and no one's really quite sure how to handle that because their parents didn't. Have that yeah. so we got to get through this generation to really figure this out well and that's a really good point you two frank and james are parents how do you feel about bringing up kids in this kind of world of cancel culture and fear monitoring and all this stuff it is literally the hardest thing you can do i bet i would freaking die actually what? different response from it. But it, it it is what it is what do you mean like for me the I just want my kids to do right, but I have no control over them. I have no control over anything, anyone, in my entire life. 
So I want to teach my kids to be good people, but I also have to have the realization that no matter what I do, they can make choices for themselves. And that's all it is, is like, hey, I hope I instilled the proper values in you and you can make good life choices and you can be successful and continue to build wealth and do this and that. But literally, whatever they want to do is their choice and it's not, it's not a fault of mine. Like, if I can go through life and say, hey, I tried my best, I did what I thought was right, and if they turn out to be bad, it, it is what it is. That's their, that's their choice, you know? Um, it, it, it is what it is. It, it's, that's a really good point, and I, I personally wish more people were doing that because it's very evident that in this day and age, and yes, you're going to have some outliers where, you know, kids have some you know, genetic predisposition to be a certain way. But by and large, parents have a responsibility to grow and cultivate the next generation of adults to be decent. Which is a good point. Frank, why is it the hardest thing you've ever had to do? Think of the uh, difficult questions you asked your mom growing up. Okay. What was the most difficult thing you can think in your head that you had to ask her about? Uh, I have a 12 year old daughter and we have constant discussions about sexuality and other things but none of us ever had to have that conversation with our parents because it wasn't forefront in everything we do mm. not that I'm saying it's a bad thing I mean much like he said it, it all does come down to the choice of the child but as parents we're, we're still there to answer the question it's hard to answer a question that's truthfully going to be an opinion-based answer mm. when you didn't live through that. Yeah. Like my daughter is pretty sure that she's pansexual. Did any of you guys grow up with a buddy that's like, I think I'm pansexual? I didn't know. We didn't even know what that was. No. And then we I, were, I, 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 still I still don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, we right. were. <laughs> <laughs> Small town in Indiana. Try, try yeah. explaining and having a conversation with a 12 year old and understanding that. Like, I try to understand and then I try to give her my points. And hell, 37, almost 38 year old man fucking Googling to try to keep up with, like, I don't even. I don't even know where this would be in the forefront of what you have to do. When I was 12, I was worried about the chain falling off my bike and whether I could go swimming at the park pool the next day during the summer. Right. Like, yeah. Like, I didn't even know what gay was back then. Exactly. I mean, I had no idea. I mean, and then by the time, <laughs> we, by the time we did know... You weren't around to tell me about yeah, it. We, we had to learn about it on our own, you know? We, we had certain things getting thrown in our face of... You know, you, of course, back then had the outliers of like, oh, it's evil. And, you know, you're religious zealots. They're going to burn in hell. They're going right. to, and as right. we've gotten older, our personal opinions aside, we've learned they're people. Like, that's all they are. Yep. That's all anybody is. But the thing is, is like, it's always, the, it, like, all that stuff, it's always been there. It just wasn't, uh, we just weren't educated or aware about it. Uh, or, like I said, at least me. Because it just wasn't uh, part of your life. Yeah, and I mean, that's why I can't really have any judgment about a lot of stuff. Because, like you said, I was more interested in riding my bike or, or going right. to the park pool. So, like, if you want to know about, you know, the shallow end of the pool, like, you know, or how to fix a, a dyno. Right. <laughs> bike which, shape. which diving board's more springy? Like, yeah. those were the answers I could give you as a 12-year-old right. kid. And it's not even so much that, like, yeah, I say it's the most difficult thing I've ever had to do, but it's, you're always going to be scared that even though it's always their choice, that you may not have the answers that they need. Yeah. You may not be able to prepare them for the things that they're going to face based on the choices they do make. It's almost an accelerated learning process for both parties, for the, exactly. for the child and the parent. And I imagine it's been like that for ever oh yeah but probably like, since the beginning of time yeah but i i remember trying to use jargon with my mom and she had no idea what i'm talking about and i'm sure my god there's so many things that you gotta deal with as a parent because there's a lot you don't know and thankfully you got google and urban dictionary but so today 
Right. And they can keep up and they can advance you so fast, but you have to keep up. And my God. And then the other thing is we're older, right? Like Dave and Eric have brought up. We know more things that we can go to get to the more scientific truth, if you will. Actual truth, if you will. Kids don't. No. And I think it, it's one of the things that I think has made cancel culture such a big deal over the past few years is misinformation, right? She's trying to learn about the stuff just as much as I am and trying to help her through it. It doesn't mean that everything she's always going to find is going to actually be true information. So let me ask you guys something else that's kind of been on my mind to that point of misinformation. So I regularly will see this sudden new synthesis of information that people will post online that is something along the lines of, and this is an example I've seen recently, Obama said quote, whatever, 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 when I know as soon as I read that, it didn't make sense, just like that, it's way too obvious, and I go and I check. You know, I don't really care that much about Obama, I'm not liberal, you know, I have no skin in the game, I just think it's peculiar, so I want to know why everybody thinks this is so great. So I go and look, and it's, it's, factually semi-correct by like 10 percent but worded in a way but worded in such a way that it benefits a joking manner for the opposite political affiliation of obama so naturally you have these you know re republican leaning conservative types that are posting this you know in their trumpian way that they've been taught by their fearless leader to constantly poke and poke and poke wherever they can and it's, it's like, okay, so we're going to continually post things that are not necessarily true and make a habit of it, and then also find other things that other people have posted and not look into those either and post those as gospel as well. And we wonder why we're so confused and why people are not getting along. But the thing is, is everyone's already made up their mind. Right. Now you're just looking for information or documentation that supports your belief. Confirmation bias. It, it's it's strictly, you know, your experiences dictated your leaning. Now you've informed your opinion, and now you're just going and finding as much info. I mean, same thing with anti-vaccinators or pro-vaccinators, like whatever you want. You're looking for anything it, that can make your point right. Yeah, but, but it's wrong. But what my, my point of this is twofold. One, why do we need to do that? And two, how much damage is this causing to the fabric of society every time it happens? Because for one, I've already answered the question earlier why we do it. It's because of dopamine receptors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but two, you know, the damage is going to be a death by a thousand little cuts. And every time we do this, we're eroding our sense-making capabilities. So now all we know is what we've been told by, you know, whatever Somebody. political identity that suits our fancy. And that's the ticket because it's easy. It's easy. That's the issue. We're wired also from a neuroscience standpoint and evolved that this way to take the easy road. The brain wants everything to be easy. That's just, if you're, say for instance, a hunter-gatherer, you're going to take the path that you don't have to fight through the most to get the berries or whatever it is. It's no different in this communication format. You're gonna do whatever makes the most sense, the easiest, every time because your worldview is being reaffirmed and you're getting a dopamine boost every time you do this from not only seeing the reactions but getting the camaraderie out of it. So we're getting all of these reinforcing self-bias scenarios and it's not going to get any better anytime soon. But like just even with the false quotes you're getting back into um, any politician doing any type of campaign smear yep. advertisement on, say, TV 
So then you're just getting right back into media in general. Yep. Yeah, where, even farther past that, just yeah. people talking. I think yeah. a lot of it comes down to, and I say it all the time, people want to be right. Yeah. yeah. Nobody they wants do. to be sure. wrong. And people just like to argue sometimes. Yeah. I once had a guy at work randomly walk to where my desk was out of the clear blue and go, are you a Trump supporter? And I, I turn and look at him, and I'm busy at the time even. And I say, no, no, I don't really vote per, per party. I vote on the issues, but why do you ask? Well, you know, we really, uh, guys like us, we gotta stick together. And you know, you really should, uh, really should rethink that position. And then started to get huffy and puffy about it. And I said, I'm sorry, but I'm busy right now. We really shouldn't be talking about this. And then he went on about his business, but he was not happy about it. Why was he not happy about it? Because it didn't reaffirm his beliefs. Exactly. But I mean, you, you see that because I mean, we even have cancel culture within individuals and their media. Yeah. I mean, you see it on Facebook all the time. Of like, if you don't agree with this or... You know, if you don't support... Unfriend me and get off my page. Yeah. Or I'll unfriend you or clean it out. And it's... Instead of being exposed to different viewpoints and hearing different sides and having good conversation, it's just, nope, nope. I need to enclose, enclose myself more and more. And the thing is, is that with, you know, 8 billion people in the world... If you unfriend everyone who doesn't agree with you on a certain issue, you're going to realize you're alone mm -hmm. <laughs> because not everyone is going to agree with you on every topic. So that's where I, I, I feel like, hey, you just need to get with the idea that no one cares. Right. <laughs> you, you, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, but your, your, opinion, your, opinion, <laughs> your opinion only matters to yourself. Right. That's it. There's... I don't, I don't care what anyone else tells me because at the end of the day, I'm self-serving and so is everyone else when it, when it boils down to it. I want to do good for other people. I want to help other people. But at the end of the day, you, you have you. to help yourself. Yeah. Right. And, and really society, even at the global level, is just one big workplace, right? And what do you do at work? You get along to get through what you need to do to be able to provide for yourself in a self-serving way. Or you don't. and you just Or you don't, and you it. make life hell for yourself and everyone else, mm -hmm. which is what we're encountering right now, point blank. Well, I mean, other people, I mean, I think any, any, any place you go, workplace or whatever, there's always someone that's negative, even pre-COVID. I would say post-COVID, there's a lot more negativity. But like I said, for me, I'm not really experiencing that way. And something that's been enlightening for me is I'm like, man, I'm not a wheelbarrow for everybody's problems. Yeah. I got my problems. I'll carry my problems. Don't 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 put your problems in my wheelbarrow. Mm. No, I've moved on. But it's, I think people want you know attention or they want change or they want something, and they they try and and share it in such a negative way, but it's really unappealing for anyone who's not that upset about it, but very attractive for the people that are also like, ah, I agree, I don't like that, I'm gonna jump on board. And then you get into the, the cancel culture idea of like, ah, if we complain enough, if we gripe enough, if we show enough frustration, it's gonna change it. But then people get more frustrated if it can't be changed. And then it's like, well, now we'll protest it. Well, okay, the protest didn't work. Well, now we'll burn it. Well, okay. I mean, um, well, maybe in that part, that's the good part about social media because at least then you can garner your voice and have a voice and maybe find like minded individuals, which may not be a good thing all the time, but at least you can garner support for your cause and at least try to, try to get the truth of what you need because before media, before politics, or any of that, it was religion. Like, all right, we're Christianity. Believe us or die. And before that, it just keeps going back and forth. And it goes all the way back through history. So, so maybe then, this is the good yeah, change. Yeah, but then so, it comes back to like, hey, should I be scrutinized on what I say on social media about my opinion? 
Let, let's circle Maybe back. that's the evolution we've been looking for, though. That's my point. Yeah. Let's circle back to this religion argument because it's a really, really important piece of how society even came about, right? So, we'll, we'll stick to Christianity just to use as an example, for instance. Well, it's probably the one we know. Christianity yeah. is, in my estimation, the philosophical bootloader for most human beings. So, we're animals at base, okay? If you take a group of humans that are infants and raise them outside of all other culture, they're going to war and fight over resources without any other kind of guiding principle. Yeah. Now, now, if we have these stories that have in their base code nothing but, hey, this is a, a lesson we have learned over time in civilization as it's progressed. It works for a reason. You should probably follow it. There are many of these cases within the, the Christian Bible, for instance. That's why it's the, the most you know, read and sold book in existence. Um, it was a really good user manual for how to handle society just at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And then you take it from there and you go however you're going to go based on your circumstances, of course. But that being said, yes, we've moved on from this. Does it serve a purpose for some people, some classes, an individual based on their circumstances? Yes, it does. It does a lot of great things. But there's a lot of people in society that have well moved beyond the needs of the baseline. And now we're at this point where we have had this melting pot of so many ideas and so many directions and decided this door doesn't work, this door doesn't work, this door does, this door kind of works. And we have interwoven all of these concepts into this network of ideas, throwing out things we don't like, throwing in things we do like, and new topics. And we're at this point now where it's hitting critical mass, coming down to the point of fusion, and we're about to explode with the next whatever in replace of religion or yeah, maybe ideology. Not a bad thing, though. So yes, what I think you're agreeing, and this is what I was getting to, is yes, you are correct. This is essentially a transcendent moment. For society in general. And no wonder it's so scary because nobody knows exactly what's going to happen next. Maybe we're finally in the toaster. Ooh. <laughs> what, what toaster? It's a spiritual once bread is became Once bread is became toast, it can never be bread again. <laughs> That's true. It's my, it's my best metaphor I can think of for change. Kind of like uh, whenever someone says something that they later regret, it's like the toothpaste coming out of the tube, you can't put it you back can't in. can't put it back. Just like once you've turned bread into toast, you can't go backwards. It's a really good lesson for children. Yeah. And we can bitch about cancel it's horrible. I'm about as smart as a child. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. But, oh, I did. Well, maybe it's not a bad thing. You know, like, I mean, I feel like if social media wasn't such a big deal, we, we wouldn't have known about George Floyd. And as anybody knows, atrocities like this happen all the time that happen forever but this is the first time we can watch it we all as a people as a human fucking race can watch it happen and nobody can stop it you gotta ask yourself why was this one time the primer for the powder keg oh the, why I mean, this one time out of all of the many that's happened it wasn't it wasn't so out there like this no, not, not, not just in terms of like social media out there but like this is an 8 minute video of a man dying that everybody watched and you can pull up videos of Dudes, with their getting their heads chopped off by the Mexican cartel. You can watch that, but you don't want to watch that. This one, it was forced on everybody, and why? Social media. So maybe that's not a bad thing. With the timing of the pandemic, oh, yeah. people were at home doing nothing else, so they had time to watch that. They right. had time to really focus on. They had time to think about it. And then you start get, get going deeper down the rabbit hole, taking the red pill, and all of a sudden there is an Illuminati sometimes. But the point is, right now, maybe it needed to happen this way. Maybe it's not a bad thing. So where do we go from here? Uh, I mean, when you say like, maybe it's not a bad thing. You have so, to be careful with that definition of bad, too. Yeah, like, I mean, as far as uh, George Floyd and his death, yeah, it's a bad thing. Like, I don't know, it's pretty crappy watching the video. I, I, like, I, you I just don't know wonder. anybody that would say it's not a bad yeah, one, and then, you know, you see now people are also posting videos of 
police officers being shot and their last words. And I'm like, well, that's, that's a bummer too. Like, yeah. like actually all these videos are pretty crappy and just bumming me out. I'd like to move on and, you know, uh, but I, I think for me, the cancel culture is okay. The, the, the topic, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I guess how my logic is working is the protests and the riots about racism and systematic racism and police um, br brutality it somehow is now transferred into um, you know syrup and butter and <laughs> right. you know car cartoon <laughs> characters and things like that and it's like okay um, I think the officers have to be held accountable, the departments, the police, at the end of the day, they all need to be held accountable. But once again, once the intention and, um, you know, it's my assumption that that police officer had no care. But that's my assumption. I'm not that cop. And it's but here's trial. the thing. Oh my God. That, 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 that right there is a good point. The trial will dictate all of that. But... I'm afraid of what happens after the trial because regardless of how it goes, things are going to change. My One God. side's going to because explode. Yeah. No if, if, if he gets off scot-free, huh. that means one extreme. Yeah. If he is given the sentence he deserves for yeah, exactly. murder, but just being held what does that mean exactly? Out, you know? yeah, you're right. Dude, and will it be enough? That's the other thing. No, I, I don't know, but I mean, like, we, we talked about, you know, the lady antebellum, and, you know, it was like, hey, this has some negative connotations. I had no idea that antebellum, I mean, I don't, I'm not familiar with their music, I'm not. They do a song called Need You Now, and I think nope, it's, uh, no, okay. it's lost interest. <laughs> You know, he did a duet. But, that's a really you know, they changed their name. But then slowly, like, I was reading about other words and things that are used a lot that have super racist connotations. And, like, one of them was, like, the, the, the master bedroom. And I was, like, at no point in my entire life, whenever I said, I want a master bedroom or walk-in closet, that all of a sudden master bedroom had racial uh, ties to it. No, it just mean it had a bathroom connected. Yeah, that's that's all I took. <laughs> it, it, and it always meant biggest bedroom to me. Yeah, yeah same yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. But I've never even questioned now, it. Now that I'm aware of it, like, automatically I'm like, okay. I well. support slavery. <laughs> no. Sorry. No, I, I don't. But uh, <laughs> No, that's a really good point, actually. It's, it's that concept of because you believe there's nothing wrong with a certain thing or you support a certain thing that could be construed as, as racist, then you suddenly now default to full switch on you support racism. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It, unless someone's actually out going and being racist, yeah. they're not racist. And that's the thing that I have the biggest issue with this because there's never any evidence to support, oh, well, the company that it, it, you know has the product Mrs. Butterworth, mm -hmm. whatever that company is, I'm not sure. Um, have they done anything that's racist? I don't know, but they sure seem guilty now, don't they? Yeah. Because now suddenly they're taking action where they are assuming guilt in some way yeah. because they are supporting racism. Now see, that's the thing, though. The best problem with racism, especially nowadays, you can't just run out and lynch a dude anymore, even though they tried recently. You can't just do that anymore when it comes to racism. It's very subtle. It's not just in your face about it anymore. It's a tone. It's a movement. It's a word. It's just just very subtle ways of being able to say, hey, guess what? I'm racist. And you can't do anything about it because you can't prove it. And we're in a society where you're going to be able to prove it. When you can't prove something like that, straight black and white, there's a lot of gray area, especially when you just say it a certain way. You use a certain tone. You just say it kind of weird. And people that know can yeah. tell. But we can't prove it. And that's the shitty part about it. So, Miss Buttersworth, we're talking Aunt Jemima and shit. We're rough to go through and everything. Maybe that does need to change. Because, I mean, 
maybe it just needs to change. Because maybe a lot of things need to change, and maybe that's where we're at right now. But you can't just like try to just pin somebody on, and that's why I'm scared about this trial. We can't prove that dude, unless we have like some kind of transcript that this dude stepped on George Floyd's neck because he really wanted to because he was black. Can't really prove that. And actually, somebody brought that up on a podcast recently. Did we actually witness a murder? And that's what the jury's going to have to decide. And even then, like you said, if he gets off scot-free, it's going to explode. And if he does, if he doesn't get off scot-free, then a lot of other people are going to be mad because he was just doing his job. And mm-hmm. maybe the prosecutor can, or maybe the defense lawyer can prove that. Yeah. And if he can, and he proves it to a jury, my God. And then that's the worst part. Maybe you have to make this dude guilty just to appease the mob. And right. there's the other problem. But Do you want to appease the mob? But even it, then, is that enough? That's not that's not enough to end racism in general. No, but it might so, be able to buy us some time. It might be able to stop what's happening but, yeah. from exploding. But are we wanting to buy time? Or are we wanting to end it? And that's the problem. Do we, do, do, yeah, we, we want to end it, obviously, but is that going to do it? You're right. Are we Look. just ending it on a national level? Or are we ending it worldwide? Oh, and See? Yeah, no, 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 that's that's that that's is the worst ridiculous. part. Is that do we want? And that's the problem. Do we want to appease the mob? Do we want to satisfy these people before they just tear our homes uh, apart? Right. I think the thing is, is that everything goes back to individuals, and until individuals as a whole want to do something, you're not going to eradicate it. You're not going to do anything. It's everyone has their own opinion. Everyone. Is going to do what they want to do. And like, my opinion is that this is probably a subject for another time. So, yeah. closing arguments. Frank, what do you got? Arguments, words. <laughs> Compliments. I look good. Yes. You do look good. You do. Gave me glasses. You got that haircut all of a sudden. That was good. That's right. I think I missed a spot. The only closing argument I can really come up with with everything that we've discussed so far tonight is... There has to be a point, I feel anyway, that as with everything in the world right now, we've got to figure out where too far is. Fair. James, what do you think? I mean, for me, like I said, I'm not a fan of the cancel culture because um, I, I just think people have to realize that there are different opinions out there and move on with your life. I get it. If there's a, a negative public outcry in your business and you need to change your business to, to stay competitive, say that's a business decision. What I do not support is any type of government involvement. Let capitalism be capitalism. If a business isn't doing something right, let the consumer dictate it and put them out of business. But if the government's going to regulate then I feel like you're going against the free speech and it's the double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. There's good and there's bad. Eric, what do you think about your generation on cancel culture? Be the representative. I think we're all in the gener- same generation. We're all you're the young youngest. Sorry, right, damn. I my guys, I'm <laughs> the youngest dude in trouble with the Sorry. You're the baby. You're the baby in this group. You're the baby in the group. I don't know. Uh, don't. I don't know. I guess closing. I don't want to be. Just don't get influenced too much. That's fair. Yeah. Be be yourself. And. What if you're a racist? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Be be yourself. And get canceled. Even if you are fuck that. Even if you are racist, know what. Know what hate is, before being racist. How does that sound? And get canceled on the way in. Yeah. <laughs> and then get canceled. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't think you should get canceled for presumptuous racism. No, I'm afraid. Yeah. Yes. Or presumptuous sexism in general. But yeah. or anything. Anything that could be considered as hate when it's not. Easy as that. Yeah. Jay, final thoughts? Well, I think we have a problem with cancel culture because, as James said, it's an individual thing. I 
think the individuals on the whole are very unhappy. The, the income distribution is not what it should be as far as people having their needs met to prevent them from reaching these levels of unhappiness. Um, I think this is by and large due to a root cause of lack of opportunity. I think if we we're ever to solve the symptom of cancel culture, then we have to solve not necessarily income inequality or equity or however you want to qualify, quantify it. It's all about this, you know, distribution of opportunities. So we have people, for instance, in the inner cities that they grow up on the streets and they don't really have much of a chance. They don't have, you know, people to look up to, to carry them through, to get them through the hard times of growing up. Next thing they know, they fall into the same tribal patterns of, you know, the others nearest to them. And the circle of the self perpetuates itself. That is a consequence of their environment at which they started by pure chance. Yeah. Um, has very little to do with race. I will make sure to say that because um, it just so happens that you have all races that are in that scenario based on that demographic in confined city, inner city areas. You, you have the same issue with whites as blacks, you know, Hispanic, Asian doesn't matter. It's just in varying amounts depending on which direction you look. Um, yes, there is something to be said for black culture currently being in a state where it's glorified to be a gangbanger through, you know, rap music and stuff like that. So some people do gravitate towards the city and grow, um, continue to add to that population. But at the end of the day, it's all the same problem for everybody. You have near, not nearly enough opportunity to overcome that. And the, the few people that do overcome it are extreme outliers. You have anecdotal situations of people that have, you know, come out of these really rough neighborhoods and made something of themselves. And they're an inspiration to others showing, yes, you can do it. You can pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And then they're not the ones out complaining. You don't have them, you know, saying, well, you know, we should start canceling this because this is against our views. No, they're, they're more worried about making the next dollar. They're more worried about doing something for others and pulling them up. They're not worried about how they are offended or how they are not offended. It's not a concern because they don't need an axe to grind. They already had that axe to grind. They, they rose up from where they came from. Yeah. That's just how I see that. Okay. The way I see it, you uh, you can't really stop the wave from crashing. Nature's going to do its thing. The world's going to turn. Uh, things are going to happen. I think that's why right now it's scary, but it's also very exciting, but it's also very scary. So can we control the winds? Can we control the waves from crashing? I don't know. We are human beings. You put us in tundra and we'll make a house. You stick us in the desert and we will find water. We will persevere. We will go on and we will keep going. And maybe that's a good thing. And maybe the next part of this could be good, could be bad, but we'll make it through, I think. And I don't really think that us here on Midwestern Mumbles have the answer that you're looking for, but if you've got another opinion or maybe some insight you can drop on us or just an opinion in general, leave a comment. Return the map. We might have to strike this because of that. But uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. If you're still here. It's a nice little outro. Oh, the outro. <laughs>